After a series of deadly crashes in recent years, a community is now calling for changes along a Scott County road. A burglary suspect has died after police say an officer shot him in western Kentucky. Now investigators say he threatened police. It's a record-breaking jackpot on Saturday. We have advice from a lottery expert before you play. This is WKYT News at 11. And good evening. Thanks for watching tonight. Many people who drive on it call it a dangerous stretch of road. And in the last year and a half, four people have died in crashes there. So tonight, a petition is calling for changes to a Scott County road. Many drivers say a curve on Highway 227 near Stamping Ground is just too dangerous. And now the city commission has joined the effort to make that road safer. Monique Blair has our top story at 11. The road is just outright dangerous. In October 2014, three people died in an accident on this curve of Kentucky 227. 29 year old Corey Wilcoxon, 22 year old Trevor Spencer, and Trevor's son, three year old Skylar Spencer. It's been devastating to me. I mean, Trevor was my only child. Yeah. So it makes it real tough. For more than a year, Trevor's father, Keith Spencer, and Trevor's stepmother, Elizabeth Carroll, have been petitioning for changes to be made to this stretch of road. We're going to fight, and I ain't going to shut up till I'm dead. This past August, the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet installed signs alerting drivers to a curb ahead. But just 10 days after those signs were installed, another life was lost. Almost one year to the day after that accident in 2014, 23-year-old Paul Burton was also killed on this same stretch of road. So now stamping ground city leaders are stepping in and also asking for major changes to be made to this road. There's no pull-offs, honey, no. and you cannot pass. On Wednesday, the Stamping Ground City Commission unanimously voted to stand behind Carroll's petition and asking the Transportation Cabinet to once again make changes to Kentucky 227 and eliminate the dangerous curves and also provide areas for vehicles to pull off the road. You can replace property, but you can't replace these kids. In Scott County, Monique Blair, WKYT. And we have a link to the petition on WKYT.com. Some people have left comments on the petition saying they too have lost family members on that stretch of road. And now to a developing national story we're tracking right now. Authorities have arrested two people on terrorism-related charges in California and Texas. They say the California arrest is a refugee from Iraq who's accused of lying to federal investigators about his travels to Syria. Authorities say he tried to fight alongside terrorist organizations. The governor of Texas says the arrest in his state may have prevented a terror-related event. New tonight, Governor Matt Bevin is warning of steep spending cuts in the coming months. The governor spoke during a Kentucky Chamber of Commerce dinner in downtown Lexington tonight. He said that he has had budget requests for an extra $2 billion in state spending during the next two years. But he says he will not approve it. Because we must get our financial house in order. We have to shore up the foundation. We need to stabilize our economy. We need to send a message to our credit rating agencies that we are serious here in Kentucky. Also at tonight's dinner, House Republican leader Jeff Hoover said Monday could be an historic day in the state house. Republicans are trying to take control of it from Democrats, but he would not elaborate. New tonight, we're tracking the investigation into a deadly officer-involved shooting in western Kentucky. It happened this afternoon in a wooded area in Davis County near Owensboro. State police say the Davis County Sheriff's Office was investigating a burglary at a home when they spotted the suspect in the wooded area. Police say as they were trying to arrest the suspect, the situation took an unexpected turn. At that time, the individual actually produced a hidden uh, firearm. Uh, and as he raised it in the direction of the officers, another officer engaged the individual with his patrol rifle. Police say the suspect was then shot. He died at the scene. No officers were injured. The names of the suspect and the officer involved in that shooting have not been released. Also new tonight, Georgetown police say they have arrested three Detroit men in a stolen credit card case. Police arrested the men this afternoon at the Kmart in Georgetown. They say the men were trying to use stolen credit cards there. Georgetown police think the men traveled down Interstate 75, stopping at multiple stores. Each time, police say the men used stolen credit cards to buy gift cards. 
Kentucky lawmakers will consider a bill that supporters say protects the state's gun owners. Earlier this week, the president said he's using executive action to expand federal background checks to more gun sales. But some Kentucky lawmakers think he's going too far. If House Bill 35 passes, Kentucky would not recognize federal laws that restrict gun ownership. Some lawmakers say it has bipartisan support, but not everyone is on board. The federal government knows um, what they can and cannot do, but should they step beyond that line and try to do anything which does, does abridge those rights, then we as, uh, as the Commonwealth will not recognize that here. I don't ever, no matter what the political moment is, I have never voted for anything which in my mind was unconstitutional because I put my hand on a Bible and I swore to my God to uphold the Constitution of the United States. And I'm not going to, for political expediency, uh, violate that oath. At this point, House Bill 35 has not been assigned to a committee. Looks like it will be a rainy Friday across much of the bluegrass, and that leads to even more changes, more drastic changes this weekend. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look at the forecast. Hey, Chris. Hey, Sam. Putting the wraps on a gorgeous Thursday across central and eastern Kentucky, but the rains are creeping toward the area right now. Defender Radar Network picking up on the drops not too far to our west. Some general light rains here. Sprinkles west of E-Town, Louisville, toward the Bowling Green area. That stuff, those really picking up the pace a little bit. The farther west and southwest that we go, especially west of the Nashville area. See that blob of moisture? Well, that's aimed right at central and eastern Kentucky as we go into a little later on tonight. Throw the clouds into the mix. We've been noticing the clouds increasing all evening long across the area. Humidity levels are up. Up. Now let's look at a future radar. Watch the timeline. Notice how that big slug of moisture comes through in time for the trip into work and school tomorrow morning. But by 11 tomorrow morning, already beginning to see the back edge of the steadier rains pressing on through. Moral of the story, tomorrow afternoon will get better than what we start the day with. Couple of storms to our west, and that is heading our way. The one, though, that is cruising across the Albuquerque area, that's a weekend system. That is rain to snow into parts of central and eastern Kentucky. We're tracking that big blast of winter, a couple of big blasts of winter, Sam, highlighting or lowlighting your seven-day forecast here in a few minutes. A lot to think about. Thank you, Chris. It was another rough day on Wall Street as worries about an economic slowdown in China hurt stocks. The Dow dropped nearly 400 points today, its worst drop in three months. It was also the third triple-digit loss of the week. And the price of oil has fallen to its lowest level in 12 years. Investors are hoping for good news in tomorrow's labor report. Signs do point to another rise in hiring nationwide, which could give a boost to the stocks. New tonight, investigators say an explosion badly injured two people and destroyed an eastern Kentucky home. It happened this afternoon at a home off Highway 32 in Lawrence County. Emergency managers say both people in the home were airlifted to a hospital. They say that one was in critical condition, the other in serious condition. Investigators think propane gas caused that explosion. Also new tonight, Lexington firefighters say some quick work kept a fire from causing too much damage to a house. The fire started late this afternoon at a home on Forest Avenue off East Main Street. Firefighters say a man doing some work on the home accidentally caused the fire. I talked to the gentleman afterwards. He said, yeah, he was soldering on some copper gutter work here behind me. And uh, he must have got a flame or an ember or something back in there because it, uh, it lit off. Firefighters say the man alerted the woman who was inside the home, then called for help. No one was hurt. Firefighters say while the fire made it into the home, they kept it from spreading beyond a the stairwell. They say the woman who lives there will be able to stay in the home tonight. It is now the largest lottery jackpot in U.S. history. Saturday's Powerball jackpot has increased to $700 million. That has many people dreaming of what they'd do if they won. So tonight, we talked to a financial planner who's consulted some lottery winners over the years to get some advice for you. Garrett Weimer has the story new at 11. Powerball fever has hit the nation and it continues to spread ahead of Saturday's drawing. So what if you win? There you go. Thank you. Good luck. First, a dose of reality. The odds are 292 million to one. It's like hitting three holes in one in golf. It's like getting hit twice by lightning in the same five minutes. It's so unusual. Just because the jackpot's a whopping 700 million, lottery expert Don McNay says don't blow all your money on a thousand tickets. It won't change your odds that much. One ticket will work just as well as a thousand will.
If you're in an office pool, McNay says make copies of the tickets and write down everyone in the pool because money can bring out the worst in people. So be careful about that kind of thing because the odds are astronomical, but hey, you might hit. So what's the secret? You know, all these people that have systems and ideas and super numbers, it's just luck. You just happen to hit the lucky number on a lucky day and that's just how it works. Hmm. And if you do hit it big, McNay says, give some money back to your community. He says the happiest people with money are the folks who use it for better things. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. And McNay also says if you win, make a plan before you go claim all that money. The drawing is scheduled for 1059 Saturday night. Today marks 24 years since police say a Bell County woman was murdered, and police still have not made any arrests in the case. Police say they found 24-year-old Greta Henson shot in her Middlesbrough home in January 1992. Recently, police say they found new DNA in the case, which they've sent to the state crime laboratory in Frankfurt. They're hoping it finally leads to those responsible for the woman's murder. Henson's mother is not giving up. I do believe they will be caught. I surely do. I surely do. She deserves justice. She needs justice. We do. Police say they believe Henson's own gun was used to kill her. And new tonight, police are trying to find the person they say made a bogus threat in Jessamine County. The Jessamine County School Superintendent said dispatchers received a 911 call from a school bus this afternoon, and the caller made some type of threat. Police responded to investigate, but soon figured out it was not credible. Police say that once they find the person who made the call, charges will be filed. Two months after a burglary at a Kentucky police department, one of its officers has now been charged with that crime. Police arrested Simpsonville police officer Terry Putnam at work this afternoon. There he is. In November, police say drugs, guns, and $30,000 in cash, all stolen from evidence lockers at the Simpsonville police department. Putnam claims surveillance video from a nearby gas station will prove he is not responsible for the burglary. Some shipping containers are now being turned into a new home in Lexington. The shipping containers used to hold baby shoes, toothpaste, and cotton pads. Construction crews are now welding them together on York Street to create a more than 600 square foot home. The North Limestone Community Development Group calls this a way to create affordable housing. One bathroom, it's a kind of an open floor plan. There'll be a deck off the back. There'll be a covered porch on the front. Construction crews hope to have the new home ready by the end of May. New tonight, the curtain went up for an annual program that teaches Central Kentucky children about musical theater. The Broadway Buddies program kicked off tonight at the Lexington Opera House. More than 100 children taking part this year. The children learn about theater etiquette and stagecraft, and they get to take a backstage tour. This is a, a program that's designed to introduce youth in Lexington who might not have the opportunity to experience the art and magic of live theater. The children will also get to see a performance of the musical Annie Sunday night at the Opera House. Super Bowl 50 just a month away, and tonight we've learned a big star is joining the halftime show. Halftime show organizers say tonight that Beyonce will perform joining Coldplay. Beyonce headlined the Super Bowl halftime show three years ago. She recently collaborated with Coldplay on the band's new album. Super Bowl 50 is February 7th. You'll be able to watch it right here on WKYT and CBS.